Have you ever faced a project issue where finding the root cause seemed like searching for a needle in a haystack? Hi everyone, I'm Andrew from PM Aspirin, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel where we help you master project management skills and certifications. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more insightful content on project management. Today, we're going to dive into an essential tool for problem solving, the cause and effect diagram, also known as the fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram. This diagram is a very helpful tool, especially when you're trying to identify the root cause of a problem. The cause and effect diagram is a visual tool used for root cause analysis. It's designed to help project teams systematically identify, sort, and display possible causes of a problem or effect. Imagine a fish's skeleton. The problem is placed at the head, and the possible causes are laid out as branches along the spine. The goal is to focus on the underlying causes rather than just dealing with the symptoms of an issue. In project management, we often face complex challenges where there are multiple contributing factors. The fishbone diagram helps us dissect these complexities by visually organizing potential causes into categories. It's a great tool to use in brainstorming sessions, where you can collaborate with your team to identify all possible causes of a problem. Now, you might wonder when this diagram comes into play. In project management, it's commonly used during the plan quality management, manage quality, and control quality processes. These are all part of the project quality management knowledge area. And the Ishikawa diagram is most useful when you're trying to solve complex problems that might have several contributing factors. It's particularly effective during brainstorming sessions, where team members come together to explore all possible causes of an issue. So this is where the project manager plays a critical role facilitating the session, encouraging diverse perspectives, and ensuring that all potential causes are considered. Let's break down the structure of the Ishikawa diagram. As I mentioned earlier, the problem is written at the head of the fish, and the main causes branch off the spine. These causes are grouped into categories, which are tailored to the type of project you're dealing with. For instance, in manufacturing-related projects, you might use the six M's to categorize causes. Manpower or people. Methods or processes. Materials. Machinery or equipment. Measurement or metrics. Mother nature or environment. If you're working on a service-related or non-manufacturing project, you may use different categories, such as policies, procedures, people, and systems. The flexibility of the Ishikawa diagram is one of its strengths. It can be adapted to fit almost any type of project or problem. Now, let's walk through the steps to create your own Ishikawa diagram. 1. Define the problem. Start by clearly defining the problem you're facing and place it at the head of the diagram. Be as specific as possible. A vague problem definition will only lead to vague solutions. 2. Identify major causes. Next, identify the main categories of causes. These will be the larger branches coming off the spine of the diagram. Use categories relevant to your project to ensure you cover all potential areas. 3. Brainstorm possible causes. With your categories in place, it's time to brainstorm possible causes for each category. Ask yourself and your team, what could be contributing to this problem in this area? These causes will be represented as smaller branches off the main categories. 4. Break down sub-causes. Don't stop at just one level of causes. For each cause you identify, dig deeper to uncover potential sub-causes. Keep going until you feel you've reached the root cause of the issue. 5. Analyze and prioritize. Once your diagram is complete, it's time to analyze it. Look for the most likely root causes contributing to the problem. While the Ishikawa diagram helps identify potential causes, it doesn't prioritize them, so further analysis may be needed. You can use tools like a Pareto chart to determine which causes to address first. As a project manager, your role in this process is crucial. Not only do you need to facilitate the brainstorming session, but you also need to ensure that the team considers a wide range of possibilities. Encouraging collaboration in different perspectives will lead to a more thorough analysis. Once the root causes have been identified, it's up to you to interpret the diagram and develop strategies to eliminate or mitigate the identified causes. This kind of structured problem solving is a key skill for any successful project manager. So where exactly can you apply this tool in project management? Here are a few common uses. Problem solving, it's perfect for identifying root causes of issues or defects in products or processes. 
Quality control. The Ishikawa diagram helps you explore the factors that lead to deviations from expected quality standards. Risk identification. By analyzing different contributing factors, you can also identify potential risks in your project. Process improvement. It's a great tool for determining inefficiencies in a process and finding ways to optimize it. What makes this diagram so powerful is its ability to provide a comprehensive analysis. It encourages teams to explore all possible causes in a structured way. Plus, it visually organizes these causes, making it easier to communicate findings to stakeholders. Most importantly, it keeps the team focused on the root cause of a problem, ensuring that you're addressing the issue at its core, rather than just putting out fires on the surface. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to PM Aspirant for more project management tips and tools to help you succeed. Your support will enable us to create more quality project management videos. Let me know in the comments below how you've used the Ishikawa diagram in your projects, and feel free to ask any questions you might have. Next, you may want to learn more about Pareto chart on prioritizing issues. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.